Thanks for tuning in. I just brought the 2004 Chevy Silverado down from the storage yard. It's time to tear it apart so we can use our cab from last week. If you don't know what I'm talking about, link's up there. Let's get started. So let's get the plastic off of our build that's been keeping all the freshness in. And hopefully some of that warm Texas air. Because it's cold here. Mondo. Somebody's been here before. How bad is it, you ask? That's seven and three quarters freedom units. Seven there. This center post, five and a half. Oh darn, didn't work. On the plan B. I was secretly hoping plan A didn't work so I had an excuse to use Mr. Air Chisel. Sorry safety experts, you guys are taking a lot of losses today. No gloves, no hearing protection, no eye protection, no suit of armor, no bubble wrap. What am I missing? So now we got our door open, we can pull it off. Pull our trim panels off so we can get to our wiring. Fish the wires out. Unbolt the door check and two hinges. And lift the door off. Yank the seat out of there. Pull the B-pillar trim out. In the pile. Now we can unbolt the seat. And we can slide it back a little further. That's why we take the B-pillar trim out, give ourselves a little more room. So we get to those front bolts on the seat. Now we can open the back door. I was amazed both of the doors open with the inside latches. I was also a little disappointed because I lost an excuse to use Mr. Air Chisel. But I get to bend the door, so that's kind of a bonus. Unbolt our hinges. This one you can't exactly lift off. It's more of a twist off. That's what it looks like. Our B-pillar went a little limp. Now we'll unbolt the driver's seat before we start pulling our cab and lose our power. So now we start pulling our front end off to get our cab ready to come off. Take the brackets off for the fender. When we take these springs out, they won't fold down if those brackets are there. We're going to take the hood off a little differently than we did last time. We're going to take it off so we won't have to readjust it later when we put it back on. So 
So we're just gonna unbolt the hinges. There's a bolt that goes through the center that it pivots on. It's just a nut and a bolt. Take it out and you don't need to adjust it when you put it back together. Now I'm all by myself. I have to manage this hood. So I put some blankets down on the fenders to keep it from scratching. Just kind of slid it forward till I could reach it and lifted it off. I'll evacuate the AC system. No headlight bulbs. Pull the grill off. AC system is discharged. Now we'll pull the bumper off. Pull the air intake tube off. Take out the air box. Unbolt the overflow bottle and set it off to the side. I can unbolt the bracket for the air box. I can unbolt the fender from the firewall. And the radiator support. And the hinges. And take it off. Now you can disconnect the battery. Take it out of the way. Disconnect the electrical box. Pull the bracket off the electrical box that bolts to the fender. And remove the battery tray. Pull the master cylinder off. Now we can unbolt our fender. Take it out of there. Now we can take the wipers off. With our wiper arm removal tool. Pull the cow screen out of the way. Disconnect the hood latch. Disconnect our ground strap for our engine. Disconnect the steering shaft. Now we can unbolt the AC lines and pull off the heater hoses. Remove the shifter cable. And remove the e-brake cable. I'm so used to doing it this way, because everything's always so rusty here, I probably could have used the actual adjuster. Old habits. I'll take the brake cable out. Disconnect Satan's little invention there. And we can unbolt the cab now. tension on that mount. Uh, cab's ready to come off. Just lift it up. Put the lift in high gear. Now it's time for a game of truck Tetris. So part of the afternoon crew showed up at night as the pizza delivery girl. So she got put to work. And pull our door off. 
pull our dash apart. Pull our vents out. So we can get to our screws inside. Pull our A pillar trim off. And then pull the top of the dash off. Now we can pull the glove box out. Get that driver's seat out of the way now. And the console. Pull the steering column out. Unbolt the knee bolster. Unbolt the bracket for the BCM underneath. Otherwise you end up breaking it. Don't ask me how I know. Now we can unbolt our dash. Push our wires through. Those will go with the dashboard. Pull the dash out. We'll make the shorter one walk through the car. I don't get to say that very often being that I'm always the short one. Now we can unbolt our HVAC box and take it out of there. Pull our wiper motor out. And now we got the standard issue broken bolts for the exhaust manifolds on an LS motor. So there was enough there I could weld an end to it welded a bolt onto it and twisted it out. Inside I wasn't so lucky. I drilled it out, tried an easy out, wouldn't work, ended up just drilling it all the way out and retapping it. Put a new bolt in. Now back to the truck. Pull the B pillar trim off. Pull the door off. And get the seats out. So tired of crew cab Chevy truck seats. jack and jack tools out of there. Score one for the clean freaks. I'm doing the detailer's job again. Now we can pull the carpet out. The clean carpet. Pull the air ducts out. Disconnect the wiring harness. So we're gonna get the padding out of there. I'm gonna pull the trim panel off the back of the cab so we can get our C pillar trim off. We need to change that wiring harness and part of it goes up here actually one wire to the defogger. Kind of annoying. That one wire. So now we got the whole harness. Take it all out. 
bring it over to our other truck. Now we got to disconnect the brake assembly. Our boosters are different, so we're going to have to change them. Pull the brake light switch off, disconnect the pedal, unbolt the brake booster, change the gas pedal at the same time, it's also different. Change the throttle control module. I don't know if it's different, but it's three bolts. Might as well change it. So now we can bolt everything back into our new cab. Put our brake light switch on. Clip it in, route the wires. Okay, clean freaks, you win. More cleaning. What have you done to me? But wait, there's more. Turning our cab into a winter wonderland. Who is this guy? What's next? A coat of wax? What channel is this? Alright, it's all clean. Throw the padding back in. This is actually the way it's supposed to be put together. Padding first, then wiring harness. There's nothing wrong with doing it the other way. It's just slightly faster if you do it the way it's supposed to be done. Bolt everything in. Throw our air duct in there. Literally. Snap it down. Now we can throw the HVAC box in there, bolt it up. Throw our carpeting in. it all in there. Run our wires through it. Stuff it under the pedals. I'll put our vent back in that we had to take out to get to that defogger wire in the back. And the evening crew had to go back to their pizza route so I had to struggle with the dash myself. It's not too bad, except for the shifter cable. That thing's kind of annoying. Bolt it all up. So we'll route the wires back through the firewall. Pull the boot in, seal it up. Plug them in where they go. I'll put a little wax on our brake lines and our fuel lines so that they hopefully stay nice. Do best to combat the Illinois corrosion. Now if we just combat the Illinois corruption with a can of wax, that'd be great. So that's it, we're out of time for this week. Tune in next week to see how much more we can get done on this truck. So like the video if you found it interesting, share it if you think somebody else might, subscribe to see the rest of this truck. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Inside, All right. Can we put your door back outside? Wait, whoa, whoa! Did you say go? Yeah.
that. So tune in next week to see if the trash talking afternoon crew can keep up with the old man. Comment down below on who you think's gonna win.